The first polls are about to close in one of the most important elections in our lifetime. Can Donald Trump win four more years in the White House or can Joe Biden pull off a historic victory? The eyes of the world are on this election and both candidates have spent the last 48 hours in a final dash for votes. Donald Trump ended his campaign with a rally in Michigan, a state he won four years ago by the narrowest of margins. He then headed back to the White House where he'll give his verdict on the results as they come in. Joe Biden was in Ohio and Pennsylvania, Midwest states that may hold the key to this election. He's enjoyed a lead in the polls for months, but that will count for nothing if his supporters don't turn out. Here in America, voters have been standing in line since dawn to have their say in an election that has split this country. It looks like turnout will be up on last time, despite the coronavirus pandemic that has killed more than 200,000 Americans. John Sopel and Nick Bryant are with the president and his rival. I'll be live at the White House where the president is planning a party for 400. Whether it will be a celebration or a wake remains to be seen. Joe Biden announced his first bid for the White House 33 years ago. But is 2020 his moment? At the age of 77, has his time finally come? Our correspondents will be live from all the key battleground states in this vast country, including Clive Myrie, who's in Pennsylvania. So many of the roads that could lead to the White House for Joe Biden and Donald Trump run through Pennsylvania. Its 20 electoral college votes could put either man over the top. So, all eyes will be on the Keystone State, won by Donald Trump in 2016 by less than 1% of the vote. Tina Dahili will have regular news updates for us throughout the night. At the touchscreen, keeping track of the votes as they stack up, Christian Fraser. This is how it finished four years ago. And this is the magic number we need to keep in mind. 270 electoral college votes or more will give one of these two men the White House. We will track the vote as it comes in east to west. We will focus in on those crucial battleground states and I will project for you the best route that these two men have to the White House. In a few minutes time, we will wipe the slate clean. We are ready for the results to come in. And we'll be joined by a team of election experts and strategists from both parties to help us interpret the numbers and discuss what the outcome means here in the United States and, of course, around the rest of the world as well. Tonight will be a watershed, a profound moment of history. So join us for all the excitement of election night in America here on the BBC. So, Katia, an extraordinary uh, election campaign fought in a pandemic. Uh, both candidates over 70 in that age group most vulnerable to the virus. One of them catches it. The West Wing of the White House becomes an epicenter of the epidemic. Another candidate seems to spend most of his time in a basement. Outside, America is divided as never before since the Vietnam years. But tens of a million of Americans have gone to the polls to vote in this election. Yeah, America's gone to the polls 59 times, Andrew, since the founding of this nation. They've done it in peacetime, they've done it in war, they've done it in depression, they've done it in prosperity. But this election it certainly feels completely unique. It, it has at the center of it, of course, Donald Trump, who has made this presidency about him, who has become a source of fascination right around the world. And this election tonight really is a referendum on one person. It's a referendum on Donald Trump, and we will see whether the Americans decide to give him another four years in the White House or whether they decide that four years was enough. There's great concern, nervousness across.